Hello folks, you join me with the Aero Technician's YouTube channel. Uh, are you a student or are you a technician or an engineer? Well, does I eng, eng tech or C eng sounds anything to you? Well, this video is all about what value does these profession registrations can bring to your career. So without further ado, let's get to the video. Well, I have a messy hair today, can't do anything about it. So, so there are three giants when it comes to professional registrations and engineering. They are Royal Aeronautical Society, uh, Institute of Mechanical Engineers and Institute of Engineering Technology. Now, these professional bodies can give an accreditation for your um, engineering experience and your qualifications, namely EngTech Engineering Technician, Incorporated Engineer or IEng or CEng, which is which stands for Chartered Engineering. So, to get different statuses, you need different qualifications and experience. So, before jumping into that, let me tell you why should you apply for a professional registration. Well, take an example of two candidates who's facing an interview one of them has five years of experience no professional registrations whatsoever but the other guy he has five years of experience professionally acc accredited with a let's just say ing okay and so what's the difference between these two candidates if i was the interviewer and if i want to see which candidate carries more weight towards my company? I'll definitely go towards the the one with the professional accreditation. Why? The first thing is if you if you take your C V and you it's like your words against your C V, which means whatever you think you did in your in your workplace, you just write it down. But if you go to an uh one of these professional bodies and get accredited they will recognize your qualifications as well as your experience so the interviewer knows that this person has registered his experience and qualification with a professional body so i can trust him more than this guy the interviewers know that if you have these statuses okay your experience and uh, your qualifications are registered from somewhere so that gives a bit of trust okay the second thing what are the minimum requirements to apply for each and every uh status i'm not going to talk about c eng or chartered engineering that much because that's another level okay i'm gonna bring a, a video on that as well but up until that i'm gonna strongly focus my video on to eng tech and um eng so the requirements are you need a curriculum mutate cv and a qrf a qrf is qualifying report form you can find if you go to a website like um or royal aeronautical society or mechanical engineering institute of mechanical engineers or iet you could get this form and the next thing is you have to have a technical task when it comes to eng tech and copies of your certificates uh, so these are the main requirements to have and if you are applying for an eng tech an hnd with experience is the minimum uh, professional requirements they would ask and then if you are applying for an i eng they would ask for a bsc or a b eng if you have a master's degree with experience you can apply for a c eng but these are not mandatory if you have tons of experience like 12, 10, 15 years of experience, you can just go for a chartered engineer without a formal qualification. But you might have to go through a few processes which I'm not aware of. So these are the minimum requirements. You need a CV, you need your QRF completed, and then you, you have, uh, when you complete your QRF, it's this uh, UK specs. I'll show you at the end of the video. So you have to fill in your experience um, against this um, UK specs so and then you need 
copies of your certificate. So as I said, there is a notion within the engineering world that all the aeronautical, aerospace and aircraft uh, professionals should apply with Royal Aeronautical Society and all the mechanical um, professionals should apply with IMACI and all the other STEM professionals should apply with IET. Now this is wrong. I'll tell you why. Because I've known many mechanical engineers who applied with Royal Aeronautical Society and get recognized. And I've also seen many aeronautical, aerospace people applying with uh, IMACI and getting um, their qualifications recognized by them. Hence they get their uh, status as ING or CING or ENG Tech. So this is because all three of these bodies are under engineering council so this uk spec i was talking about it's under the engineering council so what happens to your application you apply through one of these bodies your applications will end up in engineering council for reviewing and then from engineering council you'll get a certificate saying you have uh, fulfilled the requirements such and such with this organization which is IMECI Royal Aeronautical Society or IET as an incorporated engineer or as an eng tech so you can apply to anything so you don't have to be worried about selecting a body it doesn't really have to align with the professional qualifications or the education qualifications you have now if you're a student who's willing to take up a career in engineering I would suggest you to have a look at the your preferred university and your course and going through to see whether this uh, university is recognized by one of these bodies. As you can see now, um, aeronautical engineering degree is accredited by Royal Aeronautical Society and this mechanical engineering degree is recognized by IMACI and also this mechanical engineering degree is recognized by IET. What's the benefit of this? This shows that you are already qualified. If you have this qualification, you're already qualified to apply for this status. So you don't have to do a qualification assessment like me because I had a diploma in aircraft maintenance. I have a degree in aeronautical engineering. So none of these uh, programs were recognized by neither of the bodies so i have to apply for a qualifying report sorry i have to apply for a qualification assessment and then go through my ing application before applying for any of these professional registrations you need to be a member preferably associate and above so if you go to the website you will see what uh, level of membership you need in order to apply for a certain status and Royal Aeronautical Society associate and above you can apply for any of the things I don't know about chartered but uh, incorporated and inch tech you can apply with an associate membership for students accounts are free so I would ask you if you're a first year second year third year student just get enrolled in one of these bodies you got different courses uh, which will improve your CPD and then you got many things you can volunteer you could do many activities with them and like improve your knowledge also there are webinars free webinars there are many things so please do and it, it also will look really good on your CV because an employer would definitely know that this guy has sorted out his upcoming years that was a loud ring okay so how did I do it before going into that let me show you how does this website looks like now if you can see this is the web page of Royal Aeronautical Society these are the things Eng Tech, ING and engineering um, sorry C Eng that I talk about and this is a sample um, QRF for Eng Tech students from uh, in uh, Royal Aeronautical Society so as you can see I'll scroll down as you can see now you have to explain under the UK specs so I, I promised you that I'm going to show you what UK specs are I'll show you at the end of the video so so yeah this is how it looks like so the next thing is what is UK specs so UK specs is something 
like this you got a b c and broken down into different um sectors so like d you got communication and the personal skills and e you got professional um professional and a you got knowledge and understanding so these are the things that you need to fill against so this is a chart that i i actually extracted from i extracted the information from the uk specs and i created a chart so i could like select whether i have this experience whether i don't have this experience and on the blue to the right you can see you can see where i put notes on different stuff whether yeah, if I if I don't remember my experience, I check my logbook and write it down. Okay, this was the experience I'm going to write. So when it comes to writing your own QRF, it will be much more easier. And you know you have completed your UK spec. So, and then I enge you don't need a you don't have a formal interview. You can just apply with your QRF and all necessary documentation, and you can get your Eng Tech registration and. For IEH, there's a formal interview. They will talk about your experience against your QRF. So these are the things I wanted to get you. And like, please do feel free to comment below, ask any questions or anything concerns aeronautical or mechanical. I'm, I'm like, I'll help as much as I can. So please don't forget to subscribe, comment on the videos, share my videos so others can see, and just to. Uh, big shout out for one of to one of my friends like he's really good at chartered or career building or personal building so his youtube channel will be linked below and at the end of the video with that being said we'll come back with another video next week so till then keep fixing